Today on the Canadian Way, the 1973 Dodge Charger 340. Now, just listen. Now, that's a sound. I've borrowed this Charger 1973 from the Rodig Museum, which is a museum dedicated to our hardworking ancestor that helped building our country. The Rodrigue Museum is located in saint sauveur Quebec, Canada, around 40 minutes north of Montreal. If you'd like to visit the museum, just call at 1-514-951-5331. Three five and book a visit. Massive thanks to Rodrigue Museum. Oh hi! A massive thanks to the Claude Roderick Museum to let me review this car. By the way, this is our first sports car on the channel. Well, kind of hobby car, let's say. So for this review, of course I'm gonna show you feature of the car, but we're gonna focus more on the driving aspect of that vehicle. And trust me. This is really cool. So, you all know the Dodge Charger from the Fast and Furious, which I review by the way, huh? Not the best review ever, but still. You all know the Dodge Charger from the Fast and Furious franchise, but back in 66, when they, this car arrived on the Canadian market, it was a full-size coupe. And I mean, full-size. This is the third generation Charger that arrived in 1971. This is a 1973, which is an important year for that generation since it's received some updates, especially under the hood. When it was new, from what I found, the starting price was around $2,875. Yeah, I'm not joking. Almost three grand for a brand new car. Nowadays, these charges are getting rarer and they worth around $25,000 to $30,000. Some very nice one, $35,000. So nowadays, what you get for that price? A uh, very used Maserati, a used BMW M3, a used Porsche Boxster. So, why you should get this instead of a used Porsche Boxster in very nice shape? Let's find out. The general look of the Charger is crazy. I mean, it looks angry, it looks muscular because it's a muscle car, and it looks from another era too. And it is big, I mean, big. It's almost five and a half meter long. That's a lot. Of course, even if that car was three grand when it was new people still turn their head to see it. You have this massive, massive front end with the grill and these angry headlights. This car is flexing big time. Look at the way the roof come down here. It looks so aggressive and muscular and now I'm putting all my dirty hands on it. The owner won't be happy. You also have real chrome trim all around the windows and a vinyl top. Something that you don't see today anymore. You also have these chrome trim all around here, which increase the muscularity of the car. Compared to a modern Dodge Ram, the Dodge Ram looks like something very svelte, yoga ish. For a car this size, look at the mirror. They are tiny, and trust me, you don't see anything in it. I also have from the front to the back a huge stripe here with chargers written on it because you want to show it's a charger. In the rear, you also have this kind of sloping grill on the back window which looks very cool and you have that wing that provides zero kilo of downforce. It's only here for style. Even if the wing doesn't provide downforce, it's adjustable. 
to create them for us. The rear tail light again look very muscular. It reminds me of the rear end of a shark. And you have these, sadly. These are regulation from the 70s. Every car must have that for safety. Also, I have massive twin muffler. I mean, gigantic twin muffler. Beginning the interior with the trunk, like always. The only way to open the trunk on that car is with the key. When it work? No, it's an old car. Huh? It's older than me. Here you go. As you can see, the trunk is gigantic, enormous, massive. You can, f I can fit my bike in it if I just take out the wheel. Although the, the hole to access the trunk is a bit small, but still massive, gigantic. You won't have any problem for your road trip. As you can see here, there's an old tire. It's the original spare tire. It's a 14 inch. And uh, if you got a flat, uh, I don't think you should try to use it, but it's there, original spare tire. Getting in the rear seat of the charger, being a coupe, you need to pass by the front door. So you start by opening the front door, which has this really sturdy door handle. It feels like reloading a gun, listen to that. As you can see, the door doesn't open this far, but it's a massive door, it's almost a meter long. So you still have plenty of room to access. To get in the rear, you need to press on the bottom over here. Everything is manly in that car. Yeah. And then you can access the rear. And as you can see, it's pretty much easy. And I fit, you can fit a six foot adult in the back of that car. Try to do that in your Porsche Boxster. Look how roomy it is. I got like an inch. Look, my finger can fit. And the seat is back up at his maximum position. This is how you do rear seat. Everybody should take notice of that. First off, look at the rear seat. They are so cushy. It's crazy. <laughs> I like that. Then you have an ashtray over here. An ashtray over here. And another one here. This is perfect because it allows your kid to smoke. You can also lower the rear window. That's right. Using this handle over here. So that your kid can throw away their cigarette when they're done. Now let's get in the front seat. So easy. The access is easy. The seat are very comfortable. Uh, the steering is easy of access, easy of reach, and I have ton of leg room. Very nice driving position. This is your front seat, and as you can see, there's no lateral support on it, and the headrest is not as adjustable. But look how cushy this is. This is so comfortable. I mean, I can drive like five hours in that lazy boy seat. The door are massive and really heavy. And you have this really nice door handle that feel really sturdy. I mean, listen to when I open the door. I just unload a gun. The mirror, we have this little thing here to adjust it. And it's made in a very rugged metal. It's all steel. But you want to know something funny? You can't adjust your mirror on the passenger side from here. Sadly, at the time, the build quality wasn't always that great the plastic over here is kind of cheap the one over here too these plastic vents they're terrible i'm scared to touch it i mean it's dollar store quality if you look under the dash you see everything your fan everything there's no finishing over here it's a way to liberate a lot of space but at the same time it doesn't look that good Mentioned the build quality is not the best for the dash and sadly it cracks. I don't think the owner is going to be happy to see that in the review. Sorry Claude. Over here on the floor you have your handbrake with your brake release. And you also have this. This is for your high beam. And I think it's a brilliant idea. I really like it. And by the way, 
Look how much space I got on the floor. I mean, I can almost do a split in that car. Over here, you have your wiper that you turn to activate it. And if you want some windshield washer, you just press on it. And this is to eliminate your cluster. You just pull on it and that's it. This is your AC control. This is for where you want the air to come. This is for your temperature and this is for your fan speed and as you can see it's all mechanical it's very nice but it's only on the driver's side the passenger can't reach it the radio didn't follow up and i think it's going to be normal nowadays because it's hard to maintain a whole radio like this by the way this radio at the time was an option these knobs over here are a part of the radio that isn't in the car anymore. This is for your volume. So right now the radio is off. You turn this and you raise your volume. This is for your tuning. This little handle here, when you pull on it, it opens some flaps in the uh, interior to let some fresh air coming in because this car doesn't have AC. Like every car from this era, you uh, you have an ashtray over here, an ashtray made out of metal. Yes, because we're men. In the center console, you got this storage space here, which is a bit flimsy. You need to be careful. But look at the hinge, though. The hinge are insane, and you can put some paper in it or everything. Sadly, though, there's no armrest. You're just collapsing in the middle. But these seats are made to put your hands around your girlfriend. Glove box opened by twisting this little handle over here. You got a light in it and it's very nice actually. And you got kind of two cup holders, but uh, seriously, I don't think it's gonna hold your beverage. Now let's talk seat belts. The seat belts is not what you think it is. First, you need to attach yourself around the stomach over here then you have to reach over here by the way you can always put it over here after the roof there's a uh, some holder over here you need to reach for that and adjust it in length to fit on you and as you can see such a typical buckle you fit it on your belt right here and after you've done that you can't reach thing in the interior this thing doesn't go longer if you want to do if you want to reach example the glove box you need to unbuckle yourself it's really old school and scary and I don't want to see that in a crash because this will just hold you in place but this is how they do it in the time at the time now let's talk mechanic with the charger First off, you need to open the hood, which is already a mechanical process. So, you need to pull on these two pins here. Then, in the grill, you have a little latch here. So, you just pull it towards you. Then, you have another latch here. And here you go. Under the hood, you're going to find the 340 Magnum. By the way, ladies, I'm still single. 340 is the is how big the engine is. It's actually a 5.6 liter. Uh, it produced between 240 and 260 horsepower and around 290 foot-pound of torque. This one is matched to a three-speed automatic transmission. And fuel economy is a joke. Forget it. You won't find any fuel economy in that. Look how good the engine looks. It's orange and blue. No cover, no nothing, just an engine. That's how we want to wear our engine bay. And by the way, look how much storage space you got in the front. It, it, it's almost a frunk. It has independent front suspension with torsion bar, solid axle with leaf spring in the back. It also have drum at every corners, and this is scary. Driving. Charger 340. I am scared right now. This is 
really old school. First thing, the brakes are terrible. They're from another era. They're, the pedal feel hard and you're thinking, oh, well, it's gonna break and it doesn't break at all. Second thing, the visibility. The visibility is great. The windows are very close to me and I can see this long hood and I know that I'm driving something special. The gas pedal is really hard. It's like, as it's as hard as the weakest brake pedal I ever test. Oh God, it doesn't break. Oh, the steering is worse than my father's tractor like uh, John Deere, not like a grass tractor, like real tractor. The steering is so light and there's a loose in the middle, look! The car is not even moving. The brakes are just insane. They are just insane. I mean, I can't believe that they work so much it doesn't break. Now I'm at the stoplight and listen to this. The engine is alive and uh, I mean the car feel alive it feel like it has an art the steering is just hilarious Th this car is hilarious everyday driving the power uh, you got no problem moving that car I mean you got a massive engine in the front uh, it's very comfortable it's very bouncy you don't feel any bump the suspension work great I won't try to end uh, to see the handling of that car though by respect uh, for the owner to letting me drive. He told me it's a very floaty car, it's not built for handling and I don't want to try it. It's just a car out of my reach and I'm very happy that the owner let me drive it, especially since it's one of his favorite car ever. Steering is so vague, it's unbelievable. We came a long way and term of steering feel and steering handling even though it's a street speed auto because it has a huge v8 in the front the car is not forcing it doesn't need to have seven speed or everything the drawback though must be the fuel economy it must be terrible the kind of car that must do 20 to 30 liter per hundred kilometers now i'm climbing a hill it's nothing after that bridge, I'm going to floor it to see what is what. <laughs> oh, this is insane! <laughs> okay, just to laugh this car. Oh, wow! It goes from 0 to 100 km in maybe 8-9 seconds. But it's the most fun 8 to 9 second ever. The sound is insane. The, you feel that engine working hard to push the car. This car is so alive when you floor it. Oh, wow. The first time that I had 9 second 0 to 100 car give me that kind of feel. Look at my hair on my arm. It doesn't have the brake though to go very fast. <laughs> it's really vague now I'm hitting bumps and oh the suspension is very very bouncy oh it's the kind of the kind of car you don't throw on a bad road oh it's very bouncy people say that a Miata is fun to drive at the speed limit this is better and I own a Miata I know what I'm talking about this is better because at 90 km an hour, it feel, it feel over the maximum of the car. This is just crazy. I'm gonna floor it again. <laughs> oh, the sound! Oh, and it push! Oh my god, and I didn't... Holy crap, it push! Oh! I didn't know that over, I don't know what RPM, the RPM doesn't work right now, that might be an electronic issue. I don't know to which RPM it goes, but at a certain RPM, it kid backs again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I want a muscle car. I want a muscle car now. Oh, forget it. 
I see why people are ready to pay 35, 40, 100 thousand dollars for these cars. They're so fun. Yes, any new car will obliterate this car in a straightaway. But this car, I never had so much fun going in a straightaway. Never. Actually, I always find this boring driving on a straightaway, except if you go really, really, really fast. But this car gave a no new sense to me for a straightaway. One last one. <laughs> oh, I am the god of thunder! <laughs> There's only one thing you do with that kind of car, and it's driving. No infotainment system or everything. You're just driving, and it's just memorable. Now I want this as a daily, and I want to keep my Miata for the background. It's as simple as this. To conclude, this car is totally outclassed by modern technology, but it gives something that modern technology can give you, and it's soul. And this car has so much soul just in a straight way. It's unbelievable. I'm in love with that car. So, I wasn't satisfied with the conclusion I did uh, on the site, so here I go. To conclude, the uh, Charger 73 is a laugh. It's so fun to drive at the speed limit. And that is the biggest argument it has against some, some car like the BMW M3, the Porsche Boxster, and name it. If you're on the market for a GT car like the Maserati Gran Turismo or the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, you should consider a muscle car because it still has the look, it's practical, and it has a ton of soul, especially at the speed limit. And that's the biggest difference with all these cars, and that's why this car is Canadian approved and driver recommend.